Welcome back to Health, Wellbeing and Lifestyle. And our first guest today is George Tintillis, somatic psychotherapist, and he's talking about releasing anxiety today. So welcome, George, and releasing. How do we release anxiety? Uh, yeah, so today we're going to talk about anxiety, a big one for a lot of people. Uh, last time we talked about trauma, and today I want to break up trauma in a bit more specific, more detail. Uh, we've got, uh, with trauma, uh, you've got two ends of the scale. You've got the hyperarousal, which is anxiety, and then you've got hypoarousal, to use a technical term, which is depression. We're going to talk about that next time. Uh, but today it's that hyperarousal, that fear, that anxiety, and it extremes when you're panicking and hysterical and, and freaking out of your body. Uh, or when you get a phobia, that something triggers you and you're just scared. Public speaking is a big one. Uh, very common for people to be terrified of public speaking. I uh, had that myself had to <laughs> and healed it years ago. Otherwise I wouldn't be sitting here looking at a camera. Uh, but anxiety is a big one. And really what you want to be able to do is feel safe. Feel safe and feel in your body uh, and then get to the point where once you're in your body uh, to let that anxiety release. Uh, because obviously there's something there in the past, some event, um, something happened in the past that triggered you, you blocked it off, you got on with your life and uh, it just uh, stayed there. And then something happens in your life which triggers it, like public speaking, which is so big for a lot of people. If you have to all of a sudden talk in front of people, uh, people freeze. Or when you get a phobia, if people go up heights or get on planes, or it can be anything. Uh, something that triggers this anxiety, it could be a particular way your boss speaks to you, uh, triggers you, uh, and you're walking around with this anxiety and fear. And it's just one little part of your body, somewhere in your brain, There's some event in the past that basically you got scared, you know, like I mentioned with trauma, you thought, uh, I've lost control here, I could get hurt, I could get injured, I could die here. Um, and, and so it sets in. So how do you deal with that? Well, anxiety, the way it looks in the body is, oh, it's high pitched and then, oh, I'm scared. And, oh, you're leaving your body. Uh, so the number one thing you want to do is feel safe. And to feel safe, you've got to come back into your body and center yourself. Uh, so you want to breathe again, back to that mindfulness, back to that body based mindfulness, closing your eyes, that meditation style where you close your eyes, come back down and you want to feel your belly breathing. Not the chest breathing, which is what anxiety normally does and your heart's racing. You want that belly breathing because we lose our belly, we lose our legs. So you want to crunch your toes, feel your toes, press your feet into the ground, ground yourself and breathe into your belly and start to feel yourself in your belly, not up here, high pitch where you're ready to just leave your body and be above it uh, because that anxiety is taking over. Uh, and to feel safe. So you want to feel your body again, like I mentioned with trauma, and calm down. You want to calm down and, and really, so your voice can then drop. And then once you access it, then the trauma response happens. Once you're back down in your belly, then you're going to get the little twitches and <laughs> little shakes, uh, and you want to let them happen. Let them happen, oh, and then your body will just uh, diffuse and uh, discharge the fight, resp uh, the, sorry, the, um, the flight response. Next week we'll talk about the fight response, which is depression, causes depression. Um, so this time it's that fight response, so, which is why also um, uh, interval training is good, exercise is good, going for a run if you get anxious is very good, get, work it off because you, your body just wants to run, flee from this uh, event that whatever it was triggered you and you may not even remember the event, most of the time you don't because it's subconscious and again most of them go back to childhood something happened, present moment triggered it, work it out. So just run on the spot or if you've got a stationary bike or um, dancing it off helps. Highly recommend everyone dances at least once a week. Uh, very important and I'll recommend other things for depression next week but this time it's movement uh, to get the flight out, out of your body and very important, very important. That's huge for us, isn't it? Movement and breathing. They c that comes up in exercise or sort of a lot of sports. They tell you to do that with the movement to take the breaths, that rhythmic breathing. Yes, right? yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's crucial to life. I mean, there's a certain way of breathing deeply where you're coming fully into your body because you want oxygen to go through your whole nervous system and in anxiety it leaves your legs. It's your, your, your shallow breathing and you're basically cutting off 
circulation. And then if you start to worry as well, if you're in your head, that just doubles it. Uh, so you've got to clear out the worry by meditating, coming down into your belly, even running on the spot, uh, go for a walk. Uh, and look at objects as well. That's a good one also, is to look around the room to get present in the moment because you'll be going off this part of your body that has the anxiety will be going off thinking the worst thing is going to happen. Um, go for a walk and notice objects and even name them to get you present just in this moment to get out of that future worry of what might happen uh, and any memory of that trauma that, occur that occurred back that caused the original trauma which actually isn't an issue now because you're a full adult. And again, like I said before, mostly happens in childhood. Uh, but that little part of you that's blocked off is terrified, could be panicking. So you want to feel your body, go for a walk, even go for a run for 10, 20 seconds, just work it off. Uh, it discharges the, 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 fight response, uh, the flight response. And then you can relax, put a blanket around you. If you have a bath, how to take a bath is really powerful because you've got water all over your body. Most people don't have baths these days, but uh, you can do shower therapy. Stay under the shower a long time, very powerful, because you're basically, you're getting the touch you need and you're getting present in the moment to let that part of you that's terrified to realize it's actually safe. There's actually not an issue here. What you're about to do, whatever's triggered you, isn't that bad. And, and you just want to calm, calm down. And again, not have to take a pill <laughs> to do it, do it naturally. Uh, and that's the best way. That's the best way, yeah. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. And for more information on George and releasing anxiety, then please go to our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. And, jo and George, you'll be back with us to talk about depression next. We'll do that next segment, yeah. Yes, yeah, great. We'll now we'll go to break and after the break we welcome Tracy Jardim who's here to talk to us today about more about raw food. Welcome back and we have Tracy Jardim back with us today a raw food advocate, and she's here today to talk to us about raw food and the mind-body health. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you, Linda. I like to call raw food my happy food. <laughs> um, and that's because it truly is really good for us. And there's lots of evidence out there that shows that raw food is good for our mental health. Researchers uh, actually undertook a study of young people, around 420 young people aged 18 to 25 in New Zealand and the US. And they chose this group because uh, they are particularly vulnerable and susceptible to mental health issues and also generally don't eat a lot of raw foods. So what they found is that um, once these young people started eating more raw foods in their diet, they actually reported feeling um, a, more positive and um, more focused and feeling like they had more to look forward to in life. Uh, one of the things that I should also talk about that's very common and affects so many people is stress and um, stress is in a lot of people's lives, whether it's work or, or family or children, that sort of thing. Um, it's really important for us to, uh, to think about how stress affects our, our mental health and our physical health as well. Because when we uh, uh, feel stressed, it actually contracts our, our whole muscular system including our digestive system so everything contracts so it's really important to be aware of um, stress in our lives um, so what would be some examples you could give us i know you know is it equal fruit and vegetable or another food what what would that entail some raw foods are particularly good for our mental health things like bananas and berries, uh, spinach is a, another really good one, um, nuts, 
um, that sort of thing. So, so these foods have been shown to actually improve our mental health and well-being. And so what would your really top tip about the mind-body connection with health be for our viewers? I would say uh, to make sure that you include lots of raw food in your diet, especially those that are good for your mental health. Remember bananas, berries, spinach and nuts. Fantastic. And for more about Tracy and uh, the mind-body connection, please go to our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. We'll be back with Sandre Kallick, who's here to talk to us about another health, wellbeing and lifestyle topic. And now we say hello again to Sandre Kallick, our Women's Sales Success Coach. And today, our subject is resources that can work. What does that involve, Sandre? Yeah. Look, I think that, you know, when we get excited about an opportunity or um, somebody makes an invitation to us to look at how we can improve our life on whatever, you know, on whatever level that might be. You know, for me, what's really dear to my heart is women's economic empowerment, learning how to be able to bring in um, money into their business so that they can have a lifestyle that they want. But not all resources are created equal. And we've, you know, there's plenty of us that have done courses before or invested in our time and our energy as well as our money and realised that, um, you know, in my experience, sales happens and our confidence and our ability to be peaceful and to be able to make confident invitations is not just about the clarity and it's not just about the confidence and it's not just about having your clarity and your systems and your procedures and a clear way to be able to articulate what it is that you do. It's about how you be. You know, this piece of, of confidence is, is about the energy of who you be. And so, you know, there's no point in going and learning, well, you know, to be good in business, you've got to have a product, you've got to be able to sell it and you've got to be able to get it out into the marketplace. We all know that. We're looking for what will make the difference, what underpins that so that it is different for us. And we as women, you know, we feel things on a, on a very different level yes, than what men do. Yes, it can be overwhelming, do. can't oh, it, it for, can be. for us as women. Yeah. Mm. And so we want, we want, when we're looking at the resources that are out there in the market, we want to be sure that the person that we're investing in or the process that we're investing in actually will support us as an individual. It's not just a group program, it's somebody who's going to work with you one on one, understand what you do and how you do it and how you can do it in a way that does really align to your values and your heart of service. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. And it's also that thing about we never feel we know enough, do we? Is oh. We get and that can contribute towards the confusion. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it really does. And if you have somebody, you know, who is willing and capable of coaching you through that, then they are able to help you really be able to bring everything it is that you do into a system. And even those of you that are, you know, doing intuitive work, you know, there is still a system to what it is that you do. And having a really grounded coach in, you know, has experienced a lot of modalities can really help bring your, your product or service to life. So what I'm, what I'm really saying is, you know, it is a great idea to have a coach, a business mentor, somebody that can guide you. But I also believe that, um, you know, you need somebody who understands how, you know, feminine energy and empowerment actually works through your business. And we as women, we need different things from a coach. You know, we need a person who really understands how energetically all of this plays out for us, mm -hmm. how we can strengthen who we are as women as we take our work, work out into the world, as we are aligned to our heart of service and as we offer the value of our experience, our knowledge and our expertise. So yeah, I really encourage women particularly to find a coach that aligns with them, that they feel that they can relate to. 
Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, thank you for all of that. And it's been a joy to share with you. Thank you. Um, for more information about Sondre and sales, then please go to our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. And now we'll go to break. Welcome back. And next we have Barbara Boldock, who's a community volunteer. Today she's talking to us about volunteering and how positive that is for the volunteers. Welcome, Barb. Hello. And um, I know you're, that you're a grandmother of 21 and a great grandmother of three. How do you, what are your secrets for saying, staying so young and energetic? Well, mm. I think what it is, uh, that I love people. From a little girl, I always love people. My mother always taught me, Barbara, take food and give it to the poor people. My mother was a great cook. So a lot of people say to me, Barbara, you're always cooking. Well, that's where I got it from. I got it from my mother. And I just love going out there today, uh, helping people, uh, making them feel uh, happy because I've got so much energy in my life and I have a big secret about that and the more I give out the younger I feel and I think that is a big secret in people's life. I do a lot of events uh, for charity and I just love it and people say to me Barbara you must get tired but I don't get tired because the more I'm in touch with people, uh, the happier and the more energetic energy I seem to have. I'm wanting to learn, and that's another big thing in life, to learn. The more you learn, the younger it keeps you. I couldn't work a mobile phone many years ago, and I got to learn that, and then I went and did my computer course, and I'm quite proud of myself because people at my age, they say, oh, I can't do that. I could never do that. Never say you can never, ever do anything. You can do anything you want to do. And they are some of my secrets in my life. I have a lot stored up there also. I love music. I play the piano um, and I've played classical music and I've played modern music. And I also used to dance when I was younger. I wasn't a very good dancer. But I just love going out there and mixing with people. You can only ring me up. I have three phones at home and I put, put them along the beach. And they, some days they'll all go together and I'll put that phone on and that phone on and people can have a conversation because I'm such a busy, busy person. I love cooking and when a person comes home from hospital and they haven't got anybody there, people don't realise that these poor people haven't got a family and I'll go round with a dinner for them. And it just makes them light up, but not only makes them light up, it makes me feel so much better going home and Thanks. thinking how blessed I am that I have the energy at this age of my life. I've got a lot of thanks to God. So Barb, what would be your big takeaway for our viewers today? To just wake up, thank God you're alive, and get your shoes on, and go out there in the community to help other people and make other people happy. And that's my big secret of staying young. Oh, fantastic. And for more information on Barb and her secrets for staying so young and energetic, please go to our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. For now, we'll say bye-bye and we'll see you next week here on Health, Wellbeing and Lifestyle for more interviews with amazing people sharing their positivity and inspiration.